So thank you so very much for um, the opportunity. I thank folks who are still here because it's nice to have an audience, however large. Um, and also thank you to the conference uh, organizers for um, inviting me to share today. Um, what is this? Uh, my name is Danae Davis. My um, pronouns are she and her. I work really hard to celebrate my agency as a cis Black woman in the United States. I am a tenured professor, associate professor at Montclair State University in the state of New Jersey in the country of USA. Uh, the building in front of you is where I position myself uh, during my workday. I'm on the third floor of what is called University Hall. Uh, to the right of that image is a classroom that I uh, work really hard to get into because I love the space. It's, uh, it, it just does a lot in giving me opportunity to feel comfortable with, uh, with my work and um, myself. Uh, I do spend a lot of time around anti-bias and anti-racist uh, work and orientations of which feminist work is a part of that. Um, and uh, every year, I have an opportunity to teach uh, an introduction to women and gender studies course. Uh, the course is designed for uh, first and second year students. It's entry level, 100 level, and the course description is listed there. I'm not gonna read it uh, word for word, um, but basically gives students the opportunity to appreciate the um, disciplinary, interdisciplinary uh, aspect and approach of women's studies, gender studies, um, sexuality uh, and identity. Certainly uh, for students to be mindful of, um, of gender, uh, feminism, uh, and how those practices, ways of being are certainly uh, informed, um, sometimes hampered. They, they play a, a role in the way in which a person walks and lives their life or lives their life, I shouldn't just say walk. Um, so that's a bit of the course. And part of what I've um, been doing is um, as part of a, a culminating experience in lieu of a paper, I hate reading long, long papers are written by students. Um, and yeah, I asked them to create uh, some type of uh, art expression or creative expression. Um, there is the neologism called uh, artivism and it takes the word art, uh, creative expressions, and it combines with activism. So what I've asked students to do uh, at the end of a 14 or 16 week course is to create a, an expression that will uh, capture what they've learned, maybe a concept, uh, a practice or an experience, um, maybe some um, injustice that uh, they did not realize. But in addition, that piece should also be a call to action to folks who uh, view it and they are expected to share the work in a public way because a lot of that has to do with uh, feminist work and uh, activism. So a question that I'd like for you to, to think about and this came as I was reviewing uh, the work products of students, uh, what themes emerge when undergraduate students are tasked with using art or producing artivism about an issue impacting women? And a general answer that I have is vaginal imagery that presents women as targets and problem solvers. So a bit about uh, the art and, and its expression. Um, Venus of Freehold of Hohfels is considered uh, an early piece of feminist art, uh, perhaps even uh, vaginal imagery, and I'm going to share with you a short clip uh, that talks about this work. The discovery of the female figurine from Holofels is really revolutionary in the field. It's the earliest find of this kind that we have anywhere, and it really changes our image of how people viewed their world 
about 35 or even 40,000 years ago. So here's the complete arm and shoulder coming across to the belly, the large breast projecting forward, and it's the sexual characteristics of the figurine that really were depicted with great care and are the main characteristics. The whole discovery really is truly exceptional and came as an enormous surprise to me and people I've talked to in the field also are pretty much speechless about this. So I think it's helpful just to see that work and get a sense of um, context and significance of that piece. Uh, as I shared, um, it is considered, um, Venus of Hohfels is considered one of the early pieces of feminist art. Um, women and womenhood and femininity have um, long been a part and a subject of, uh, of art and expressions. Um, absent the nomenclature around uh, feminist art, this particular piece, is where a lot of the definition and understanding comes from. Um, typically, it is thought of as uh, either a two or three dimensional um, representation um, of female genitalia. Genitalia, my understanding, would be the, the, outward, um, um, the outward anatomy that's visible. Uh, vaginal imagery is also uh, considered uh, symbolizing femininity, beauty, sensuality, and sexuality. Uh, and drawing on Beckinsale's uh, interpretation drawn on the earlier piece, vaginal imagery is the embodiment of power, independence, quality, dignity, and the identity of women. Another piece that's uh, relative or concept that's relative to uh, the work that I'll share today has to do with feminist art. So um, certainly vaginal imagery is a component of that. Uh, vaginal um, feminist art, excuse me, is, is, is something that can be created by anyone. Uh, it certainly is female-centered in its presentation. Um, however, for it to truly be feminist art, it needs to be informed by a strong familiarity, understanding of, um, and empathy for women's lived experience. Uh, typically, a feminist art will be presented in one of two ways. Uh, traditional work, drawing on the tools and presentations uh, dominated by, by men. Um, so paper, pencil, drawings. But then Lauder offers disruptive fromage, which is using um, materials, um, objects, tools, things that are associated, associated with domesticity. So a lot of textile representations, uh, craft work, even uh, the use of found objects to create um, and communicate, communicate expressing, expressions um, about women's lived experience. And then finally, just a bit about where all this comes from. Um, in the United States, uh, the feminist art movement kind of got its name and it's launching around the 1960s and sought to challenge dominant discourses and patriarchal practices in the visual arts. Those themes typically evident in artwork of paint, pencil, soil material, yet to disrupt those media associations to um, associations to traditional male creations, women and feminist artists employed fromage, as I shared earlier, um, using particular uh, techniques uh, that are associated with uh, domesticity. Uh, the work of feminist art, feminist art in its relation to the movement uh, speaks to just a lot of the energy and the dyna dynamism that was happening in the United States. Uh, around the 1960s, people vying for, demanding presence, visibility, voice. Um, so the, the work coming out of the feminist art movement, again, is designed to highlight the marginalization of women, but also to celebrate and bring attention to the magnitude of women. Uh, to uh, examine and, and consider the pieces that I will share with you, um, uh, uh, giving you four um, components or four things to think about. Uh, first, you will see female genitalia artwork represented primarily in two dimension. There's one piece that's three dimensional. Uh, the artistic expressions are informed by students' new understandings of and empathy for women's lived experiences. 
The artwork seeks to challenge dominant discourses and patriarchal practices. And it's also disruptive in that in lieu of a paper or an exam that comes at the end of a course, uh, students were asked to create uh, an art experience or an art expression. Um, just as a reminder, this is not an art class. I am not a trained artist, I'm a creative. Uh, so to add that to where students are expecting more of a traditional uh, experience, even in a, quarter, a course around uh, gender and women's studies, um, just felt that it was necessary to kind of continue to, to blow it and do some things that are uh, unexpected and unique. Um, as you're looking at the work, uh, there will be these considerations. They will not show on the slide. So if you'd like to uh, open the QR code and have them as we're going through the pieces uh, you're invited to, um, I'll also share them as we are working and looking at the slides, uh, but you're invited to have the uh, considerations as we move forward. There are four. As you're looking at the work, think about how women's lived experiences are presented. As you're viewing the work, consider how the artwork challenges the dominant discourses uh, and patriarchal practices. Consider how the work symbolizes femininity, beauty, sensuality, or sexuality, and or sexuality. And consider how power, independence, equality, dignity, and identity of women are portrayed in the work. So the first piece was created uh, by Michelle Q. And all of the work, there are, I think six or seven here, uh, were, were created between the years of 2000 and 2022. Uh, so Michelle Q titles her piece, uh, No Means No. Uh, she's using mixed media. In particular, uh, there is tissue paper used to fold and form um, what she describes as the vagina and uh, the clitoris. Um, the choice of paper was very intentional and in um, or the color of paper, and then also placing the work inside of a cardboard shoebox um, to, to suggest kind of an encapsulation. Um, the use of the don't cross uh, tape is uh, used around crime scenes, and she wanted to bring attention to um, the violence uh, that women will sometimes encounter around their bodies, specifically uh, with rape culture. Um, I did have to bring to her attention that um, vaginas are not always the subject of rape, but certainly birth is a, a celebrated experience, and then also just intimacy. Um, so um, just encourage her to think a little bit differently or expand her thinking in that way. Uh, so with this piece, I guess we could think about women's lived experiences, how it's conveyed here, um, and also maybe the symbolism of femininity, beauty, sensuality, and sexuality. The second piece by Elisha Johnson, uh, created in 2020. Uh, this is titled, Women Run the World. The uh, student used paper and ink. Um, so let's see, some things to think about is how uh, the work symbolizes femininity, beauty, sensuality, and sexuality. Also give thought to power, independence, equality, dignity, and the identity of women portrayed in this piece. Um, this is also uh, presented as women as problem solvers. I'm sorry, in the earlier piece, think of that as women as targets. So here we have women as um, problem solvers. Um, student says, in my drawing, I represent feminism as women who run the world. It shows the earth in a woman's hand and the center is her vaginal area. The message behind this drawing is the promotion of female empowerment. Without women, this world wouldn't be able to run. I say this because we are the ones who bring life to the earth. The next piece, uh, Women as Targets, is a theme here created by Gabrielle Red Redinger. Uh, she titles the work, Laws Off My Uterus. And this is using mixed media. Some things to think about here, uh, certainly women's lived experience, um, challenges to dominant discourses and patriarchal practices. Uh, Think about the symbolism of beauty, femininity, sexuality, and sensuality, um, and also give a thought to where you might see power, independence, equality, and uh, the identity of women in this piece. The student says about the work, she uses a poster using organic materials, flower, and leaves to create different uteruses. 
at the appearance of vaginas in a flower form to symbolize growth in young women to womanhood and the need of both to understand the importance of reproductive rights. Women all around the world need access to health care, safe abortions, and proper birth control. Without these services, women everywhere will continue to suffer. Women are constantly being judged on the right of their own bodies, what they should and should not do with their bodies, and it is unacceptable. Women's rights are human rights. In the United States, the student says, we are fortunate enough to have some, but not enough free clinics that are accessible to all women. Unfortunately, the rest of the world, uh, excuse me, unfortunately for the rest of the world, access to free clinics and free healthcare does not follow. Many basic health issues can be solved with, the pro with proper health care. The vast majority of regulations banning abortions, excuse me, the vast majority of regulations banning abortions are made by men. Multiple panels of women making decisions together might result in more beneficial health care that would help improve the type of care for women. This next piece is created by Ness. Uh, Ness titles their work, The Future is Female, created in 2021. Theme that I associate with this, women as problem solvers. Uh, so certainly thinking about power, independence, equality, dignity, the identity of women, uh, challenges to dominant practices and discourses, um, and also perhaps femininity, beauty, sensuality, and sexuality. About the work, Ness writes, a pen drawing with minimal color depicting a billboard on a barren road. The art is meant to depict goals and critiques of feminism. I believe, Ness says, that the early goals of feminism were to create a world where men and women are equal. So I wrote the term, the future is feminine. This is a common term used by modern feminists, but I also wanted to put my own spin on it. The goals of feminism are rooted in female oppression, but mostly white women's oppression. I wanted to change that narrative in my work to point out how the goals of feminism should be aimed toward dismantling the systems that place, the systems in place that cause harm to all people, not just women. I believe that these harmful systems are rooted in capitalism. Um, She's very intentional, they're, excuse me, they're very intentional about the use of uh, images and even just placing the billboard sign there in the middle of, of, of a road. Um, and then also including the quote from uh, Angela Davis, by Angela Davis, uh, an activist uh, scholar um, in the United States, but she's certainly done global work and has a global presence. This uh, next piece is by Emma Fuentusilla. Magnolifotia, I practiced that, I'm sure I didn't get it right, is the piece that as the title of this work, uh, dated 2022, uh, and she'll talk about um, what the title means. It is watercolor on paper, original work by the student. It depicts a flesh colored fruit flower like object. My intentions are to create a color fully bold painting of women's genitalia drawing inspiration from Georgia O'Keeffe's sensual flower painting series, I painted something that resembles, or at least to me, a vagina slash vulva. In addition to O'Keeffe's paintings, I found Christina Camacho, another female artist, resonated with my work. Both artists beautifully showcase the vulva, a rather vulnerable subject. The act of creating art based on the vulva communicated a sense of pride and ownership of being a woman. In order to combat normalization of women's sexual health is taboo, my piece loudly depicts a vagina-like image. There's nothing else in the painting. The main focus is the vagina. In this piece, there is no shame. Whether it is cultural or societal, many women are taught that they can't talk openly about their bodies. Moreover, many women don't have control of what happens to their bodies. Lastly, the symbolism, of fruit or florals refers to the reproduction of or growth. The title of the piece is a scientific term that means flowering plants. This refers to plants that reproduce and blossom or bear fruit. 
The title draws attention to the nature of reproduction and in terms of feminism, the importance of reproductive rights. The last piece that I'm sharing, women as targets, say for the other. Yep, that's women as targets as well. Uh, women as targets uh, is titled uh, Pussy Paradise, created in 2022 by Tom Caraggio uh, and is using actually ink on acrylic. Um, and I'll say this afterwards. So uh, Tom says of his work, my artivism piece focuses on the issue of shaming, period shaming, where nearly half of women in the United States have experienced it. I chose this topic because I want to assist in promoting that menstruation is a beautiful event, a mark of fertility, and should never be something that someone is ashamed of. It is time to dissolve the stigma of periods. In a world where 73% of women have hid a pad or tampon from view on their way to the bathroom, it is imperative that some beautification for periods must be taught. In my piece, Pussy Paradise, a tropical island paradise is featured with a happy uterus overlooking the island. Below the uterus is its flow, creating a beautiful waterfall where people can swim and people are riding tampons. That piece had a lot of discussion in class. Look okay, back here. The waterfall is symbolic of menstruation and a sunset is seen along with the palm tree to aid in solidifying that this is a spot of serenity. I thought about this piece because I have seen how my parents and myself included have reacted to menstruation. People are afraid of things that are foreign to them. So when I was younger, I was not informed enough about periods. Upon learning that someone bleeds from their uterus was initially quite disturbing and even repulsive to me, he says. Over time, through the help of social media awareness and my sister, I was able to reform. In fact, 12% of women have been shamed by a family member. Pussy Paradise pays homage to the third wave of feminism during the, 90, during the 90s when Eve Ensler's vagina monologue debuted. Um, it was a time where women embraced their bodies, I hope my piece can continue to urge people to embrace their bodies and facilitate a healthy conversation of surrounding menstruation. Uh, so again, with, with this piece, um, I think there might've been one other piece, but it didn't focus on vaginal imagery. The students got really excited about the piece. Uh, and there actually was a, a bit of a bidding war about who was gonna take Tom's work. Tom was happy to, to share it, release it. Um, and there was some, um, very unexpected on my part, excitement around the work. The other piece that's also unexcited, unexpected for me um, is, is the work product of the students. So um, every, every semester with, without fail, uh, students are confused. Um, they're confused by me presenting the, 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 uh, the project. They're confused by the expectation because it's beyond um, perhaps what they came to class with and certainly different from what they encounter in other classes. Um, so I'd say for a good half of the, of the, the course, so seven, eight weeks, uh, if the students are thinking about it, a lot of them are just, they're just confused because they just have no idea what to create or present. Uh, again, this is not an art class. Um, a number of the students say that they don't have any art skills, that they're not uh, creative or they can't make things. Um, and I'm always, taken aback by the work product that does uh, that is created and presented. Uh, so as a result, I am certainly going to continue with the assignment um, with all of my, my work. I think about ways to uh, enhance it and um, um, present it in a way that will be more accessible and um, exciting to students. Uh, I do encourage all of us, encourage, I was putting encourage and colleagues together. I do urge all of us to uh, Think about ways that we can incorporate art, creative expressions in your, in your research. Um, heard some of some references to that today. Uh, maybe it's not the main question. It could be an ancillary question. Um, if you're, true in, you're doing true qualitative work, it may just even arise as you're looking at your, 
your um, data. So allow those uh, themes and, and um, data to, to present, right? Uh, don't ignore them. And then final takeaway is to recognize women as solutions to many of the problems that can plague society, especially regarding healthcare. And uh, that certainly, I think, is a great extension from what we heard in the previous presentation about mental health um, with regard to uh, trans youth. So that's what I have. If there are any questions that you have, I'm happy to, to answer them. Um, I'll tell you all this stuff. I don't, I don't know if this work belongs to anyone here, but I didn't create this. So it was interesting to um, be able to find uh, online um, media images uh, that certainly align with and um, support uh, the topic and the theme for today. So thank you very much for listening. And if there are questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, I'll add my information to the chat if you want to continue the conversation or begin it uh, away from the presentation today. Thank you. Thanks for the wonderful session. Danny Davis. Is there any questions for Danny Davis? Please go ahead with your questions. Hi, I, um, I, Dr. Davies, I, I don't have a question. I more um, just love that you are doing this. Um, Thank you. And that you're um, inviting students into both a complex conversation and giving them space to find their way um, and to share their heart. It's profound. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, the work that surfaces, again, I, I tell them all the time, I just had no idea all that was in, inside of them. And for many, when they create the creative uh, piece, they're also um, tasked with a narrative because I can't understand all that they present in artistic form. And I think as, as artists too, it's important for viewers or readers of your work to know, you know what your message is, what your intent is. So they're asked to speak a little bit about the media that they use, but also the message uh, in the work that they create. And um, if you had you know, an opportunity to read all of that, it, it would just really take you to a different place. But it also gives me and some hope and um, the young people that are, that are in our space and uh, who'll be taking care of me as I continue to age. <laughs> Thank you.